that's the explanation for it. So quickly, I'm going to run through these, these couple of slides. Uh, these are usually relies on clampers. This explanation of uh, clampers, that capacitor is holding the charge. Uh, but this can be translated to what is known as multipliers, meaning that, okay, if I have a voltage of, let's say, 5 volts, let's say that's the maximum I can go. But for some applications, I want 10 volts or 15 volts. But let's say my source, I cannot raise it because I can't do more than that. That's what I have available. But I want to double it. I want to triple that voltage. So we use the clamping action, multiple clampers. Uh, heavily, these are used inside the televisions, half-wave, full-wave rectifiers. Uh, but these are called as doublers, triplers, quadruple. You can keep on going. But the analysis, it's, it's a similar to the clamping action. Where what you see here is, you see there are multiple capacitors that are being used. So instead of one capacitor. So, so what usually will happen is, this is called as a half wave doubler. So what this circuit does is, it will double the, what a typical half wave rectifier does. Right, so it will double the voltage. Pardon? Double the voltage means double the amplitude. You see what I mean? So for example, if you have a half wave rectifier is like this, for example, right? Let's say this is only four volts. So if you pass this through, if you use this circuit right here, this is a half wave, but which is going to be a doubler. So that means the resultant signal would be eight volts. Still half wave, but eight volts in the voltage. So that's the doubler series. These are heavily used if you cannot change the source voltage. If you don't have a control over, but you still want higher voltage, then you use these type of circuits. So what usually will happen is, during the, when the input signal is coming positive, you can tell that D1 is forward bias, correct? So let's say the input is positive cycle. So D1 will be forward, but D2 will be reverse, correct? So what usually happens is this allows this capacitor to charge. Does that make sense? What? Meaning? No, no. Okay, so that D1 is, is got a 0.7 drop. The other one's open. So the current is going from C1. So the current is, is exactly showing in this direction. There is no current enters this way. Because it's open, so we're not even talking about this side. So once the diode is allowing the current, then the charging direction would be. So capacitor will charge us all the way to whatever the voltage minus 0.7. Now it's holding that charge. Right? So when the negative cycle kicks in, So when the negative cycle kicks in, the D1 will be reverse bias, correct? But the D2 will be forward bias that will allow the C2 to charge. But the collective voltage, so as long as this D2 forward bias, that meaning that this capacitor is already holding the charge before, correct? So now this capacitor has a path to 
discharge through the load of whatever it is holding before. So that's what increasing the voltage. Again, this C1 is already holding, correct? That one's fully charged. This one should be discharged. Yeah, if you have a load connected in here, it's not showing any resistor up there. But if you actually connect it to an oscilloscope, then the charge on the C1 would effectively discharge us as well. In this picture, it's not just showing, it's only showing how C2 will be charged up. Because it's a collective voltage between C1 and C2. Because remember, we're only talking about this is half wave, correct? This is only half wave. And you can keep on adding these, and you can get even full wave doublers as well from it. But that's the purpose of some slight different applications, what possibilities that we can have uh, using clampers. It's still the same idea. The idea behind these circuits is still clamping, meaning the capacitors charges in one cycle, discharges in the other cycle. Yeah, it's usually when the diode forward biases, the capacitor will charge us. And when it is reverse biases, it will discharge us. And we can keep on extending these two uh, triplers. So this is a full wave doubler. This provides, you can see the repetitive circuits like D1, C1, and D2, C2. Uh, but the orientation is slightly different based upon what the capacitor charging version is. So the voltage was twice in this case as well. And I don't think I have a tripler too, but you can keep on adding a uh, similar type of circuits. If you keep on extending it, you can actually increase uh, the voltage level from it. So in this case, two positive cycle, uh, D1 forward biases. So that's the charging path. Uh, as, as indicated here for the current. So as the D1, because this point is being feeding to D1, the same point is feeding to D2. So when the D1 forward biases for positive cycle, uh, the D2 will reverse biases, but the C1 will be getting the charge. On the negative cycle, you have D1 reverse biases, but the D2 will be forward biases. And you see that collective voltage across both capacitors together, not just across one capacitor. Uh, so you see the two volts peak that I'm getting is not on one capacitor, but across both capacitors. So each cycle capacitor charges and you collective across both of the capacitors together uh, so that's usually double the charge. So if you put one of the same circuit down with another capacitor, you may increase the required voltage too. So the cycle voltage has to be done? Yeah. For one, one half cycle, the C1 charges. For the other, C2 charges. And you collect across both of them together. only C2 charges, but C1 is already holding that charge from the previous cycle. And you just collect across, so if you have a resistor, you put it across both of the capacitors. That's where you will see the collective voltage. The resistor is parallel between those two points, between beginning of C1 and ending of C2. It's parallel to that branch. But if you put parallel to just one cap, then whatever that one capacitor is holding, that's what you're gonna get out. 
is like a traditional rectifiers. Yeah, that is true.